Can you walk people through the origins of the trucker convoy? We obviously saw what happened in Canada uh, previously. Is this sort of a is it a similar uh, motivation? Well, it is. I mean, it's really just a First Amendment. It's not a protest. It's a First Amendment gathering. Uh, they're trying to raise awareness and bring awareness to the fact that the border is wide open and that the uh, Biden administration has abdicated its responsibility. Not only abdicated, they've redefined it. I've been listening to uh, the, the Biden administration from the president on down and in their recent language about this, as they've been asked about this crisis, what you hear them saying is, for example, Alejandro Mayorkas in his written statement uh, in this impeachment hearings, uh, he said that he's been engaged in public service for these many years and that he considers what he's doing right now to be a public service. So his definition of a public service is obviously facilitating the entry of as many illegal aliens as possible under his tenure. Uh, we heard John Kirby the other day in response to Peter Ducey's question about why the Border Patrol would be uh, trying to block, stop Texas from blocking these migrants from coming across the border. And Kirby said it's so that the Border Patrol agents can do their job. And Ducey pushed back and said, what do you mean do their job? They won't have to do their job if their illegals can't get across. He said, no, their job is to process these people into the United States. So he doesn't see the Border Patrol as uh, their job being to patrol the border. His, his understanding is that the Border Patrol is like the greeter at Walmart to help you find your cart and make your way into the store. So uh, th that shows that there's a fundamental disconnect and these people in this convoy are trying to recenter the conversation on what it should be about which is about securing our border, making America safe. You know, they're worried about President Trump wanted to spend $11 billion to finish this wall along the southern border when the, the Republicans are now saying that by their estimates, it's going to cost something like half a trillion dollars in these the, the migrants that have already entered the United States. That's to say nothing of the $1.6 billion, most of which is American taxpayer money, that will be spent this year to pay for, whoa, a bunch of motorcycles, to pay for uh, the migrants who have not yet entered the United States that are still making their way north. There's 650,000 people in the pipeline right now, and they're being funded. Their, their travel is being paid for by the UNHCR and the Organization for Immigration and Migration, two organizations that are largely funded by the American taxpayer. So the American taxpayers are paying for this invasion, and that's what this convoy is trying to raise awareness about, to try to get people mad enough that they will do something to vote people in that will change the game. I think it's you know it's really important when you see people actually stand up and take on these issues. You know, it, you know having a representative republic, it's supposed to shield you from having to do these t sorts of things in in most cases, right. unless things get extreme. But here we are, we're in the most extreme times. Uh, these people, the truckers, by all accounts, uh, have real positive motivations here. Are you worried at all, Chuck, that, you know, what's going to happen when they get down there, though? The, the government is going to do everything they can to paint these people as the bad guys. I mean, is there a chance that this, this whole thing goes awry? Well, I think that they're trying very hard right now to keep that from happening. I was just actually talking with uh, Pete Chambers. They call him Doc because he's a Army, former Army surgeon, former Green Beret, lieutenant colonel from the U.S. military. And uh, he has been all day on the phone with local sheriffs and everybody trying to make sure that they understand these people are coming peacefully. They're not planning on blocking the roads. They're going to keep them from going right up to the border at Shelby Park in Eagle Pass because they don't want to interfere in any way, shape or form with the job that the National Guard is trying to do down there. And uh, so they're going to be meeting here in this parking lot behind me in Dripping Springs uh, and holding a rally and not causing trouble. Uh, and so they're, they're making it very clear to anybody who will listen that this is nothing like there, there's no violence plan. And they're actually uh, identifying and throwing out of the, of the convoy already agents provocateurs that are trying to weasel their way in from organizations like Antifa and other right-wing organizations that would like to see something blow up. So they're doing everything they can to try to get that word out. As a matter of fact, to join the convoy 
people have to agree to only uh, come here peaceably and to not engage in any kind of illegal illegality or violence. Uh, and hopefully that will head that off before it, anything happens. Mm, yeah, I mean, you hope that's true. And of course, uh, you have this situation with uh, President Biden, who's now suddenly become a border hawk. Like all of a sudden, uh, he's saying that if they would just pass this bill, he would shut down the border tomorrow. This is a guy who now just suddenly seems to really care about the border. Now, if you believe this, you will believe literally anything. I mean, I, I, mean, well, I mean, all you have to do is read the bill because the bill itself allows for up to 5,000 people a day to cross the border illegally. And that would have been called a crisis <laughs> any time before the last 15 minutes. I mean, the fact that now we've got, you know, that that many people, uh, we, we've got, what, 12,000 people a day at the height uh, in December until fortunately the state of Texas was able to raise the level of the river a little bit to sort of give some relief. And we also saw that President Biden went to Mexico in December and had that meeting with Manuel Lopez Obrador, the president down there. And we don't know exactly what they talked about, but all of a sudden the Mexicans are taking a much stronger stand and stopping many of the migrants from getting to the border, at least slow walking them to the border so they don't all show up at once. And uh, the real question is, what did he get in return for doing that, uh, that uh, making that agreement to slow the border crossings until the election? And some people are saying he asked for up to $20 billion in aid for Mexico, which doesn't typically get aid from the United States and doesn't need it. And uh, not only that, but 800,000 uh, visas for Mexican citizens to be able to come to the United States as well. So uh, we've already got something like uh, they say, some people say uh, a, a majority of the uh, of the working age men in Mexico are actually employed already in the United States. And those remittances that go back to Mexico are incredibly valuable for their GDP. And so there's an incentive for not just Mexico, but for Guatemala, for Honduras, for Nicaragua and all uh, these other countries, uh, you know, Venezuela, Cuba, Haiti, everybody to send as many people to the United States as possible because of that remittance issue. Yeah, it really is a huge issue. And it's, I mean, look, incentives are incentives. We know this is true That's with the right. economy and it's true here as well. And the number that you bring up there with 5,000, it's 5,000 a day, I think over 8,500 on a single day um, would, would supposedly set in this border shutdown, which, again, Biden keeps describing as it grants him authority to do it. That doesn't mean he's going to do it. It just right. grants him the authority in theory to do it. Um, but you're right. Like we we've gone through. A crisis after crisis on the border. And those crisis, those, those situations were 50,000 people in a month crossing, 60,000 people in a month oh. crossing. And we were like, oh, my gosh, this is terrible. Now we're at 300,000. When I started reporting on the, on the border crisis, it was 2004. And back then, you know, they, they were talking about 1,200 people a day coming across the border was a crisis. And, well, in reality... One person a day coming illegally across the border is a crisis because we can't vet these people. And so many of these people either don't have documents or get rid of their documents before they come across and they don't appear on any database. And so we don't know who they are, where they come from. We've a lot of people have seen these videos lately of people, the, the migrants that have come across these illegal aliens, literally taunting the reporters and saying, you don't know who I am, but you will know who I am. And as it turns out, that particular guy was a uh, extremist Muslim from Azerbaijan who uh, is the head of a quasi-terrorist organization inside Azerbaijan that I've done reporting on in the past. So uh, you know, we, we just don't know, and that's the big problem. It's not uh, it's only about the numbers of people, which is huge and is very costly for Americans, but uh, all it takes is one person to come across. I mean, it took 19 people to bring down the World Trade Centers and uh, and to, to take out the Pentagon and uh, commit the, the atrocities that happened on 9-11. Uh, we don't need hundreds and hundreds of them, but what we're seeing is hundreds of thousands of them every month. And the question is, what what is anybody going to do about it? Uh, I'd seen that video, Chuck, of that one particular guy on the border. I did not hear this. So he was he's from Azerbaijan, which 
my understanding of the map is there's plenty of countries if you need asylum to stop in uh, <laughs> between, here, between and there. The here right. and there. That's quite the distance. Uh, it would take me a week to even figure out how to fly to Azerbaijan. Um, but uh, so he is p- part of a quasi terrorist group. I mean, wh- where is he? Is he loose in That's the country? Right. Uh, well, yes, uh, we don't know where he is. He's in the United States now. Uh, and they were able to using facial recognition to figure out who he is. And it appears that he is the head of a uh, extremist Muslim organization inside Azerbaijan, which is an extremist Muslim country uh, that I've done a lot of reporting on. So, uh, yeah, that's concerning. I just came last week from the Darien Gap and I, would, I was almost 30 miles upriver into the, the jungle watching literally a thousand Chinese people a day coming out of there. And as they got into the Indian village that I was in, they were taking off all their clothes and taking showers and stuff. And these guys were covered with snakehead tattoos and tattoos that show that they're triad. You know, these, these are military age males from China coming in and they're, they're not hungry, they're not poor, they're not destitute. They've got iPhones. They've got nice clothing. Uh, and the question is, what the heck is, uh, is going on with all these people? Now, I've done some reporting over this past year about where some of those Chinese migrants are going. The Chinese are buying up farms all over the United States, in Oklahoma, in Texas, in California and other places, Oregon, Washington. And they're making illegal marijuana grows there. And they're employing these. Well, I say employing. They're using these Chinese migrants as essentially slave labor in these illegal grows, which is making it virtually impossible for the legal marijuana grows to stay in business, the people who actually pay the taxes and that sort of thing. And so it's uh, it's flooding the market. It's uh, th- there's a whole lot more to this and it none of it is good. That's all there is to it. Uh. 